Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving beta version 11 single stack video. Taking the car through the suburbs here on this drive, no highway driving. You can see the stop sign here. It shows up. It does not illuminate blue like the traffic lights do. So that was interesting. That was the first stop sign that I had come up across and it was just interesting to see. You'll see here comes another one. It's coming up. I've sped up the video just a little bit just so we can kind of get through this video a little bit quickly. This intersection was done really well. It comes out, the creep is kind of in the middle of the intersection. It took a little bit of extra time. It's always been a little bit awkward in that intersection, but overall it did a decent job. I mean, if someone was behind me, it wouldn't have been too awkward or uncomfortable. Here it's staying in the center of the lane, going straight, no problem. We're coming up now here to a four-way stop. This is the first time I've tested version 11 with a four-way stop. Comes up here really nicely, staying in the center. We do need to go straight here. It says stopping for stop sign, waiting for our turn. It outlines that very clearly. The car on the left goes through the intersection. It is our turn. It proceeds forward. No issues. I thought that was handled really, really well. So coming up here, we have just a regular drive. Um, nothing special happening here. Another stop sign coming up. There is a bike lane that opens up on the right. You'll see here, see the bike symbol. I love how it does that. It's been doing that for quite a long time, by the way. There's some trash receptacles on the side of the street. And right here, this is a very interesting thing. I come down to normal speed just to illustrate this. We come up to this intersection and it gets to the right. Watch this. See, it's getting all the way over to the right, kind of anticipating this right turn. I really like that. But then it realized, oh, hey, there's a curve. There's a curb, excuse me. There's a curb there. And it kind of went back to the left in order to turn right. So a little bit strange, but I did like it. It just felt natural. I, I felt like that was very human-like behavior to do that. It comes through this area. This is a school on the right. School is not in session. This is the evening time. There's a van in front of us. It's slowing down for them and stopping at the stop sign. There is that other stop sign there. Thankfully, it did not pick up on it. It, it recognized the stop sign, but it didn't recognize it as a, a place to stop, thankfully. The speed limit offset is set to, I think, 10%. That's why we are going 30 miles per hour at the moment instead of 25, which is what's listed here. And pretty much everybody on these streets will go 30 miles an hour. Goes around parked cars really nicely, same as before. Haven't noticed any changes there. Coming up here, turning left. It does slow down for that. And... I'm coming up on a waypoint. You could see there was someone walking on the sidewalk on the side of the road there. In 500 feet, turn left onto Paris Lane. Not too much that's special here. Turn left onto Paris Lane. It's going to turn left here and then arrive at the destination. But watch what happens here. This is so cool. So there's a plow, like a truck that has a plow at the front of it. I'm going to slow down because look at what it represents the plow as. It sees it as a construction cone. Then it says, oh, hey, there's a trash receptacle there. <laughs> so it saw it as both a trash receptacle or a trash bin and a construction cone. I just thought that was pretty funny. So I get out of, out of the way of that truck there that was coming manually. And then right about here, I turn it on and I slow this down. Check this out. There's a guy walking across the street with his dog and it shows the dog really clearly, but then the dog disappears. So it's like, okay, the dog was there, but now it's not like that just kind of always surprises me. I would think that there would be some sort of object permanence built in so that it would remember that there was a dog there. It just wouldn't sporadically disappear from the screen that has been happening for a very long time where things just come in and out of view in fact if you're at an intersection and there's a lot of cars passing by and there's cars on the other side kind of waiting for the light to change 
the, those those cars that are waiting, if they're obstructed from view by the cars that are passing, they kind of disappear temporarily, which is really strange to me. I don't know why it does that because that in in that situation, it's very clear that those cars are are still there. There's no reason for them to be disappearing, but they do. So going straight on this road here, didn't notice anything unusual, but coming up here, some cars are coming on the left side of the road. So I slow this down to normal speed. Watch this. My car naturally, very human-like, gets over to the right of the road. So right here, here comes this car. And I just thought this was so cool. Watch this. See the tentacle? See how it's, it's slowing down? It sees those cars, and then it gets over to the right side of the road. I really like that. So at this point, it's coming up to a stop sign, but you can see on the bottom left, it says, please keep your hands on the wheel at all times. And that message for some reason doesn't go away. So that is an issue, that's a bug. Here I turn on rainbow road mode just to test that and see if that works okay. It says changing lanes to follow route. It seems to have gotten over into the left lane very quickly. So that was a nice maneuver. Sometimes when you have short distances like that, it can't get over quickly enough. We didn't have too much traffic there. It decides to take that gap there very naturally. It did have to go a little bit quickly to make it through there, but it did just fine. I didn't have any problems there. These neighborhoods are really smooth. It, it always impresses me. So I've been using beta for a while and I'm kind of used to it, but when I first started using beta, the these residential neighborhood areas just blew my mind, especially going around these parked cars. I just always have a blast with that. It's just fun to see that happen. So I've arrived here. I park and then say continue trip and then wait for the next destination to kind of calculate. And then I turn beta back on, bring it back to full screen, and then double tap down to enable beta again. There you could see the lines kind of coming and going in the middle of the road. Even though there are no lines, it is showing them and then disappearing. So uh, kind of bizarre there. That That's not new behavior. That's been happening for a while. Stopping for stop sign here, checking for visibility, and then proceeding forward. Same as before in these neighborhoods, it is slow at these stop signs when there's no traffic around. It does take extra time there for some reason. And that's not a bad thing per se, and I don't, I don't think necessarily that if somebody was behind you that they would get impatient with that. Coming up here to a busier road, so stopping for traffic, it does a really nice job finding the right gap. It waits for that car and then comes out onto the street. So really nice. And then it gets all the way over to the left. Watch this. Goes through that yellow light, gets over again, and over one more time. I really like that. That was natural. That's exactly what I would have done. And then up here, there is a slowdown when this light turns green. And this is a problem. There's someone right behind me. Had I not intervened and stepped on the accelerator, I would have gotten honked at pretty badly. So watch what happens here. The light turns green. I slow this down to regular speed. Watch. So it's at zero miles per hour, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. So I, <laughs> before it dropped, before it dropped below six, I had to intervene and step on it so otherwise it would have gone probably to zero i don't know why it did that that is a problem so it changes lanes to follow route and here watch what happens it goes to the left to turn right see look at that it goes all the way over to the left that felt very uncomfortable did not like that i wish it wouldn't do stuff like that it shows the bicycle on the left there really nice now when we come up to this stop sign, someone comes up behind me. It's very awkward here. It slows down, it waits, and it just keeps waiting. So it's like, okay, there's another car coming. They kind of go around that other car, 
and my car is just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, so then I have to step on it because the car is not doing anything. And I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go. This guy's gonna get mad at me behind me. Even here, it's not taking the initiative to go left. It really should have just gone for it. I, I confused that other driver. They were kind of waiting because my left turn signal was on. They knew exactly where I was going, but my car was like, are you going to go first? Come on, you can go first. So I could have waved my hand in the air to indicate that they could go. I suppose that would have helped maybe, but I don't know. It's always that awkward thing. Now coming through this area, really, it's really natural. So this this is a parking lot, and it just it knows exactly how to get through here. There was a lady that came out uh, be from behind her car, and it handled that really nicely. It slowed down, went around her. Now here it negotiates with this car. I let it do it. I didn't intervene here. It was a little bit in in at at normal speed. It was a little bit awkward. So here we are arriving at our final destination. Now I do some tests here. So this takes a little bit of time. I keep it at this sped up speed. It's like 50% faster speed here. But I want to see if I can park the car and with the auto park. So I back up. I find uh, a, a couple spots here in the parking lot where there are gaps. And... I go very slowly and I come up right next to the car. So here on the right, you can see this gap right there. So I slow down. When it zooms in like that, that usually is a good sign that a P symbol will show up and you can auto park the car. So I'm, I'm waiting for a P symbol to show up, which I can then press and then it will back into that space. It's like perpendicular parking. So here I'm now searching for spots on the left. You can see there's a gap right there. So I, I get really close to it for this next gap. It just, it will not see it at all. And I do believe the issue here, this is, by the way, this has been an issue with beta for quite some time. I haven't, I haven't done extensive testing with out beta enabled actually I, I did at one point I tested without beta enabled and I still had this issue so in in certain parking lots it works better than others in this one in particular you can see the lines are faded there's not much contrast in the parking lot to indicate where these spaces are so the in my experience it works very very well when you have the parking lot freshly painted that D definitely helps so it's just not it's not seeing these gaps so I try again and again and again and then I eventually give up and then I realize after running through all of this I realize you know what I, I can do the auto park in another way and there's a there's a way to do this and I'll show you exactly how to do it here coming up but I slow down once again I'm really hoping that it will show up because this has been an issue. It never, I, I, I believe I, I could have done this a long time ago, like prior to 10.12.2. I think it was possible to do it in this parking lot. But it seems to be harder and harder to do the auto park with different versions of, different newer versions of beta. So here I, I, I give up and I come over to this side of the parking lot and I get ready to do this, but then another car comes, you'll see here, so I have to go in reverse. So this car, the darker car in front of me, that's the car that I'm going to have the car move forward automatically and then park itself. So I get ready to do it, pull forward, and then suddenly a car starts coming. So I have to back up, wait for them to pass, and now I line it up. Now. The, this setting disables itself continuously. So I go into the autopilot menu and you come down to customize summon. You can see require continuous press. You have to turn that to the no setting. That's the only way you can get this to work. You double tap on the button on the right drive stock. And then this message comes up. You hit that top arrow. And then all you do from there is get out of your car. 
And as soon as you close the door, the car automatically starts moving and will go and park itself. You can see my GoPro on top of my car, very visible. I do get a lot of looks as I'm driving around. So here's inside of the car, what it, what it looks like. That's me on the side and look how close it comes. So that's a setting that you can adjust. And I show you here, it's eight inches. It's really, really close. So usually you wanna have that a little bit further, but I have it set at eight for my garage. So that's why. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know you get let me let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.